Hey lovelies, in today's video I'm going to be talking all about flooring thanks to my interior design studies through the Interior Design Institute. So be sure to go check that out by the way, it's awesome. And if you have been following along my little journey up until this point, welcome. If you are brand new, I encourage you to go check out my Instagram page and on my highlights reel I have IDI which goes through the beginning day one of my advanced module studies which is what I'm going through today up until this point and I hope that you guys enjoy it and find it useful and if you have any comments or questions you can just let me know or DM me or send me a message on Facebook Messenger and I will be sure to get back to you and yeah so let's get into today's video of flooring for me flooring is such an important topic because it has to live up to the durability of constant foot traffic every day Plus, it's a crucial part of the design process because all flooring has to be laid down before anything else like your base cabinetry or appliances or any of those things are installed in a kitchen. It is specifically important for the flooring to go down first. To make this process quick and easy to explain, flooring falls under three categories. Tiling, seamless, and wood. There we go, three easy things. Now the classic choice is tiles. It actually amazes me that the different size of tiles that are available and the one that you choose influences the design style of the actual kitchen and your home. So for example, larger tiles tend to lean toward a more contemporary modern aesthetic whereas slimmer or smaller tiles tend to look more traditional plus something else that you might not really think about is that the more grouting there is the more you have to clean the next option of wood is that it needs to be sealed really well I think there's a lot more thought process or consideration when it comes to wood just because it has to live up to the foot traffic, I think, a lot more than a stone or tile would need to, because I think it, it wears and tears a lot faster over time. Not to say that it's not durable, but the flooring might need to be resealed and it also has to deal with the rise in temperature and pressure in a cooking area because of the heat and moisture. In saying this, if you have a small or narrow kitchen, if you have wooden flooring that are in planks, it tends to make the kitchen look a lot longer and wider and larger. And the third option of the seamless look includes a few options. So an option being sheet vinyl or rubber, linoleum. I think that's how you say it. I'm sorry if I said it wrong. <laughs> and poured floors like concrete, for example, and resin. So the poured flooring like concrete and resin is essentially one piece of flooring because it has no joinery or grout or anything. It's just poured down. The latest sheet flooring designs such as these are on the uprise of popularity at the moment and they do make a great choice for small spaces. So to wrap up this video, I know it's a little bit shorter, but that's fine. I find that shorter videos are just easier to digest and process, so that's great. But to wrap it up, I just want to go over a few considerations. So if you're thinking, well, gee, Emma, you know, that's all great to know, but um, 
you know, what about this or that? Or I need to consider this. So I want to go over a few considerations and questions to ask yourself or your client that might help you or be a nice guide into choosing the right floor for you or your client. <laughs> so here's my list of considerations. Choose a floor that complements your design aesthetic in your home, like generally the entire space. Secondly, focus on color, texture, and pattern, because these three considerations need to complement your design. Thirdly, something else that is very important that I would tell any of my clients is that when you are trying to work out the budget of how many tiles or wooden planks you need, always add an extra 10% to that budget for collateral because sometimes tiles break or sometimes there is a shortage for some reason and at least you have enough left to replace those tiles or planks or stain removal or any of it of any potential problem <laughs> you have that extra 10% as a contingency fourthly consider the durability of wear and tear your foot traffic if you are moving out soon and you're just trying to you know spruce it up a little bit don't necessarily invest in a very expensive flooring or is your goal just to do a simple renovation or is this your forever home that you want to invest in a really long-term durable floor these are all things that you need to think about my fifth consideration would be if you are lying down tiles your subfloor needs to be perfectly level in saying this if you have floorboards and you are tiling over said area you have to lay down marine plywood first before you can start tiling my last consideration is for the already existing floor or concrete floor that you want to be tiling over you can just directly tile over that because it is already a flat surface just make sure that any doors that are in the way or cabinets or anything of that nature does not get obstructed by the slightly new raised floor level because tiles do have a bit of height so just make sure that there's nothing to obstruct that great so now here are a few questions to ask yourself before choosing and installing flooring or to ask your client the first one being is the flooring going to be installed in a high moisture area do you have pets that are inside some of the time or all the time? So the flooring needs to be pet friendly and durable. To their walking around and their stains and running and all of that. Your third question, which is very important is, what is the budget? Fourthly, do you want to install the floor by yourself? And fifthly, do you need low maintenance? 2,000 years later. Okay guys, thank you for joining me on today's video. A little heads up for next time is flooring materials, so be sure to not miss out on that. Thank you all so much for watching and supporting me and subscribing and liking and commenting. It just, it really makes my day and it really helps me to continue to help people and to give advice. And I truly love and appreciate all of you so much. So a huge thank you because all of your views and likes and comments and questions is what really allows me to help change the world one design at a time. So thank you for joining me today. And I am so excited for flooring materials next time. So thank you guys. Bye.